Scripture in Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Turning over to Daniel, the book of Daniel, this stone cut out of the mountain without hands is the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, the old king Nebuchadnezzar had had a great vision, a dream in the night, and Daniel interpreted it. He saw a huge statue. And he said it's in the 33rd verse of the 4th chapter, I mean the 2nd chapter, pardon me. The 33rd verse of the 2nd chapter. His legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. And he said, Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hand which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broke to pieces together and became uh, like chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, and no place were found for them, and the stone uh, that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. It filled the whole earth. And then turn on over to the 44th verse. And Daniel is talking about this some more here. And the days of those kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. You know... It looks like the kingdom, kingdoms of this world is, is about to run things and rule things. But I want you to know there's another one right here now working. And in the days of those kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Furthermore, as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation doth sure. The kingdom has come. The kingdoms of this world are crumbling. But thank God, this one will fill the whole earth like a mountain. Nothing shall ever be able to move it. It's eternal. Father, bless the word of the living God today. Anoint it. Give us what we need. Bless the congregation on this Easter Sunday morning. Bless us, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. We too would like to welcome everybody to the two plays tonight. You'll see that our young people has talent God is using. And you'll be blessed. I was last night just watching the rehearsal. And uh, you don't want to miss that tonight. Come if you possibly can. Today we will be talking about what happened at the resurrection. And we know the story. We Pentecostals mighty well. And I... We're thinking of world conditions, and it's easy if you look around to get the idea that this kingdom is not working. 
But the kingdom of God works slowly but surely. And sometimes when it looks like the devil has the greatest victory, he has none. When Jesus died on the cross, it looked like hell had won. But three days later, hell knew she'd lost forever. And hell has been losing ever since. We've got a lot of so-called peace people in the world. They claim to be for peace. And I, I observe these people often. You know, Jesus is the only Prince of Peace. He has the only plan for the world. Man's plan has always failed, always will. He's never been able to stay out of trouble, and he never will. He's never been able to stay out of war, and he never will. Only the prince can take care of that. But if you'll watch when our government wants to build some new weapons, and I'm fired, I don't know what you are. I'm trusted God, but I'm like the pilgrims. When they landed in America, they said, uh, their slogan was, pray, but keep your powder dry. Right. And, uh, but I noticed the peace people of America always fighting every move we make to protect ourselves. But the same peace crowd does absolutely nothing when it comes to trying to keep peace here. They do absolutely nothing while the liberals attack the holy book that I read to you today. And they attack the virgin birth, the blood of Jesus Christ. They do absolutely nothing. When the Communist Party was taking prayer out of the school, they was for it. And when we would like to stop the teaching of evolution, they say no. The peace crowd of America is not for peace. Now, in the 60s, they told us, oh, eh, don't bother this pornography. Said, uh, curiosity, you know, they're always going to be looking around. Said, it'll, it'll help things. That's what the peace crowd said. And sex crime has increased. 400% since then. That's your peace crowd. And in their pulpits, they never defend the Bible. They'll fight us about making a new weapon, but the same fellow standing in the pulpit really don't believe in the resurrection. They don't believe in the inspired Word of God. They don't believe it from Genesis to Revelation. They don't believe the virgin birth. They don't believe the resurrection. They're a bunch of God-haters. But I'm here to tell you this morning, there's a kingdom at work. There's a kingdom at work. I'm glad I'm in the kingdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I noticed, too, that I read the other day, brother, they're bawling mad whenever you mistreat a dog. I'm against the two. They have not one little finger to raise when it comes to abortion, murdering children, making dope heads out of them, making drunks out of them. They have nothing to say about that. But don't hit a dog. Amen. I'm sick of that so-called peace crowd. I'm sick of these little weasley eyed preachers that won't preach this book. They ought to be tarred and feathered if they don't believe it from Genesis to Revelation and put out of the pulpit. Amen. Praise God. I believe it myself today with everything I've got. I really believe it. Brother Anglin. 
brought me that. The three, see the three spikes. Three rusty nails. And written on here, it said, uh, the three nails of Calvary. It said, hang your crown of thorns on one of the rusty nails. Well, you won't need them anymore. It's been replaced by a heavenly crown that will shine forevermore. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hang your old bloody crown of thorns down there. You'll never need it no more, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you did for me. Amen, amen. You didn't ask for flowery beds of ease when you came here for me. You knew it was going to be a tough job to save T.W. Barnes. You knew you were going to have to die for him. You knew you were going to have to be nailed to a cross for him. Hang your dusty, ragged garment that you wore in the grave there on the other nail. For your holy raiment is pure as your holy name. You don't need the grave clothes no more. That's one bunch of grave clothes that never smelt corruption. They never, it never was saw because the king of kings that came to establish a kingdom that would never shake, that would never be moved. Walked out and laid him aside. And Lord, hanging on that last nail that was driven through your feet for all the world and Satan to see are the keys of death and hell and the grave and a promise of life eternal. Amen, amen. He died that I might live. He hurt that I wouldn't have to hurt. He was whipped that I might be healed. Stand up, Sister Howard. Where are you at? She came over here a long, several months ago with cancer. Oh, she looks good today. What did the doctor tell you? Glory. Praise the Lord. There it is. Praise the Lord. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said to a bunch of preachers the other day, I said, I don't know what you think, but I don't think the Lord left that old rugged cross rock that he was crucified on. I believe that when they throw it aside, the angels came and got it. They took it to glory land, hanging in the hall of fame with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the other great heroes. That's going to be an old rugged cross. And there's going to be three rusty nails. Hallelujah. And there's going to be a crown of thorns hanging on. I don't believe the crown of thorns got away. Lord, I, you knew I'd have wanted to see that. You knew I'd have wanted to touch that, so I believe you preserved it for me. I want to see that robe that they cut into four pieces. I want to see it hanging on a nail. And the thing that I'll shout about more than anything else is the one with the keys of death, hell, and the grave hanging on it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the crown of thorns. Thank you, Lord, for the robe. But, Lord, thank you. That you want the hell for me. I don't have to go to hell. I 
ain't going to hell. He's already gone for me. Praise God. You don't look at this, you can see that. I'm going to hang that in my office. And every time the devil walks in, I'm going to point to those three nails. I'm going to say, boy, you cut your throat when you did that, didn't you? Amen. The one thing you wish you'd have never done is to move that Roman soldier to drive those nails. If you had it to do over, you'd run. You know now that you cut your throat. You know now you can hear the chain of the angels tying around your neck. You know now you can hear the roar of the pits of hell where you'll go forever and ever because you lost your key. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, you go back just a little bit here today, the struggle. There is a struggle with a lot of people. There's no struggle with me about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because, you see, I died one night. Had an old altar of prayer. I repented of my sins like the Bible said. I confessed them. I pleaded that he wash them away. Then I was buried in water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then one night, one night, although I was dead, I died out in repentance. I was buried like any other dead man. But the Holy Ghost fell. The Spirit of Jesus fell. The Spirit of life. Jesus said, it's good for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. i never forget that night. That night, oh glory, hallelujah. When the glory fell, the power fell, the Spirit moved, and the Holy Ghost took a hold of my tongue, I began to speak in another language. And not too long ago, the governor said something about he had a he didn't know about the resurrection. It's just something you had to accept mentally. You just had to believe it because that's what it said. But I want you to know, after I died, and after I was baptized, and after I was filled with the Holy Ghost, I didn't have to accept it mentally. I had now believed it spirit, soul, and body. I had the evidence. I had the Spirit of Christ. Old things had passed away. Behold, all things became new. I was a new creature. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. No struggle with me. There's no struggle with my faith. I believe. Do you believe? Give him a hand. Oh. oh. Thank the Lord. I got established when I got the Holy Ghost. Before I got the Holy Ghost, I was like a balloon in a cyclone. Whatever way the wind went, that's the way I went. Amen. I was up one day and down the next. I just didn't have no anchor. But I want you to know, after that night... I had an anchor. I had an anchor. That anchor kept me. I didn't ever go to the bars. That anchor took care of me. I was anchored in Him. Then what about incarnation? There's so much, so many questions about it today by men who do not know about the power of the Holy Ghost. There'd never be any question in anybody's mind that's baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. The virgin birth will never be questioned by a man full of the Holy Ghost. Never. I don't care if he's gone to a thousand colleges. If he's still full.
full of the Holy Ghost, he believes in the virgin birth because he believes in miracles. But this little Weasley crowd, they don't believe the Bible. They don't believe it works. They don't believe in miracles. They don't believe God heals cancer. They don't believe God sets man free. They don't believe there's a way for the alcoholic to be free. They don't believe there's a way for the homosexual to get free. They tell the poor thing and they're increasing every day. It's a way of life. That's your peace lovers. So call. But we know that the Holy Ghost delivers a man from anything and from everything that could ever be. Because Jesus said, I've got all power in heaven and in earth. I've got all of it. Power over cancer. Power over demons. Power over drunkenness. Power over perversion. No struggle. It all... One fellow said, man, he said, what you folks do, you get down there and, and you get to saying glory, 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 and you get to all mixed up. And uh, said, that's all. Said, you didn't get in the Holy Ghost. I said, well, tell me why. I didn't want to smoke no more, and I didn't want to drink no more, and I didn't want to cuss no more, and I didn't want to go to picture shows no more. Tell me why. I turned around. If... Getting all mixed up. I said, you fellas need to get out and make, get mixed up. And I said, well, they said, you can just say anything and anything. And I said, one day I practiced that. I said, okay, I'm going to say beans and potatoes and beans and potatoes. And I said, beans and potatoes. And when I got through, uh, I seen I, I, maybe I want to eat. But uh, I want to tell you something. This unknown tongue is something the devil don't like. He don't like it because you can talk to God and he don't know what you're saying. Amen. You talk to him in English, he knows. You talk to him in German, he, German, he knows. Talk to him in Chinese, he knows. But God's got a heavenly language. I get on my knees and talk to Jesus. The devil set off over and said, I wish to goodness I knew what he was saying. I wish to goodness I knew what God was saying to him. He said, I just have to watch it. And so we jump up and go to church. He said, I guess he said, go to church. So we jump up and we, uh, we do the good thing. We read the Bible. He said, well, I guess he said, read the Bible. And so he, he just don't know he's left in the dark. I just love him. I can't hardly stand it sometimes when I know he's in the dark. He don't know what's going on. Amen. He's not near as smart as he thinks he is. All right, what happened during his walk here for three years and six months when he was, he stayed here 33 years, uh, but there's a lot of things happened. He came under his own, and his own didn't know him. The folks that supposed to have known didn't know him because they were not following the moving of the Spirit. They were following the letter. They no longer knew what a move was. They hadn't had a prophet in 400 years because they killed them all. Anybody could talk for God. The devil don't like them, so he killed them. So they hadn't had one for 400 years, but they're still washing pots and pans, still going to church and reading the scrolls and didn't understand them because they'd got so carried away with natural things, they overlooked the spiritual things. Now, what happened in the garden? To me... This is the most beautiful sight in all the world. There he showed us that love would suffer. Love will suffer. If you love the Lord with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you won't mind to suffer. But you ain't going to suffer if you don't love the Lord with all your heart. You're not going to give up nothing. I see people don't want to give up little things. The Bible said give up. And I wonder if they still got the Holy Ghost. I wonder if they ever really got it. Because if you really get it, love will give up anything for the one it loves. And never question it all about it. Calvary, that old rugged cross, was love unveiled. That was the highest act of love. A mother loves her baby. And 
The Bible asked the question once, can a mother forget her suckling child? And he said, yes, she may. It's uh, rare, but sometimes they do. The devil can make you do anything if you follow him. Turn on your own kids. And try to destroy your own flesh and blood. It's happening every day. But you see, here is a different something happening. Here is somebody that loved the church enough to die for it. Here is somebody willing to demonstrate. Now, if he'd have been a nobody, come from down in the slums, Pat's clothes, Pat's shoes, never made himself a name or nothing in all the world. He had to make a name. Maybe dying would help do it. There's a few folks who kill somebody then kill themselves because they won't. They can kill a president. They, their name will go down in history, and that's the only way they can ever get it there. But my Lord Jesus Christ left the ivory palaces of glory land. Amen. Well, the glory of God was there 24 hours a day, 365 days in the year. Well, the angelic choir was singing to him, worshiping him all the time. And he left it one day. And he said, I've got to go on a missionary trip. I've got to go to the earth because it's lost. It's doomed. And there's people down there in my image. And I love them. And I'm going down there. And I'm going to redeem them. Wait a minute, Lord. You know, they kill one another down there. That's what I'm going for. They'll kill me. But in doing so, I'll redeem them. From now until he comes... It's going to take some suffering for us to get the gospel to a lost and dying world. What happened at the trial? This is a terrible tragedy. You go down as the tragedy of the age. The courts of the land trying the God of heaven, the creator, the one that held their breath in his hands, and yet he allowed them to beat him and to crucify him and to lie on him. And he didn't open his mouth. And he went to the cross. And Pilate couldn't understand it. They were dumbfounded. I imagine even it shook the priests. They wondered, why? Why? And even on the cross, on the old rugged cross, while they were nailing him, he prayed for those. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And one of the old thieves said, why don't you save us? The other one said, look, you know we're here for a reason. We broke the law. But this is an innocent man. And he looked at him and he said, Lord, would you remember me when you come to your kingdom? The one of the worst thieves in town recognized him as the son of God. While the high priest and the big eyes out there didn't know he was the son of God, the savior of the world. My friend, you've got to go deeper uh, than some man-made book. You've got to go deeper than some ritual out there. You've got to get down into the heart and feel from the inside to know where God is. All right. They slew. When they slew him, they slew themselves. When they killed him, Six million Jews later died at one time, practically. They said, away with this man, crucify him. Give us a killer. Give us Barabbas. You better watch what you say when you say away with the church, away with Jesus. Because when you say that, you said, give me a killer. Give me a killer. Let him come. I'll take the chance on him. And for 1,700 years, brother, the land of Israel was a howling desert. Only a few tents here and a few tents there. A howling desert. But the Lord said, the day will come when I'll restore it. But then we have Jews there that still Jesus haters. They still are fighting Jesus Christ. Spitting on the Bible, the New Testament. Spitting on the ground when somebody called his name. 
And then suddenly, here comes a robber. Here comes a thief. His name is Hitler. They ask for him. They ask for him. And now six million ties and gas chambers murdered in every way you can think of. Their skins took from their body and made in the lampshade. They were used as guinea pigs. What's wrong? You got Barabbas. You got Barabbas. He's at work on you, boys. You better wake up until you look up and say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I should sit there and I listen to the mayor of the town make a talk in Jerusalem. I watched him and listened to him. And he said, Let all the people around the world come and worship their God. And of course, little did he know we were there worshiping the same God he was worshiping. But he didn't know that Jesus was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Praise God. And I thought, I don't understand you fellas. The most honored Jew that's ever walked the face of the earth is Jesus, and you won't honor him. Look like from a national standpoint, you'd be glad somebody liked the Jew. And could you stop again and take another thought, all you Jews? Why did the Gentiles that always hated the Jews select a Jew for their Messiah? Had they been left to their own will and way, they'd have found them a Gentile to be their Messiah. That ought to say something to them, but they're blind. They're blind until he reaches down and pulls the veil from their eyes. And then they're going to look up and say, How come those scars in your hands? And he's going to say, My friends put them there. They're going to fall the whole nation and say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, today, why don't the world wake up? Men don't die for something they don't really believe. Have they made their story up for the resurrection? Have they really stole his body? And those priests knew that. All right. Fellas, here's a good chance for you fellas to take a good look here. Here, James. They took him out and said, all right, James. Do you want to say that this is all uh, just a bunch of stuff you fellas fixed up? If you do, all right. If not, off comes your head. Go ahead and chop. And it is. Here is Philip. Or Stevens. They stoned him. All right, Stevens. All you got to say that Jesus, this is a story we put, fixed up and we tried to put it over, but we are uh, not going to die for something we fixed up. But instead of that, as Paul, he had not been converted yet. He watched it and it amazed him. It was slowly but surely opening his eyes. And here Stephen said, I see Jesus standing on the right hand. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I don't think Paul slept too well. Why will they die for that? They must just, somebody else must have stole the body. They must have got it in their head. Some way, what happened? No, my friend. They met with him at least 16 times. After the resurrection. Amen. Amen. For 40 days he met with them. Day in and day out. And called them and preached to them and talked to them. And they felt of him. That's why they died. That's why they were burned to a stake. They believed it. They knew it. Now, when that old veil was rent. I want you to know, and he descended into hell. I want you to get a picture here. Down in the hell. Down in the grave. Down there. He went after the 
saint that was not in the lake of far, but near it. When he came out of there, he brought thousands of the old saints with him. And they walked around in the street and testified. And he took them on to paradise with him. Praise God. I have the keys, he said, of hell and death. I'm going to show you. And he opened the gates of hell. And he said, come on, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on, uh, Naomi, and all the saints, and David, come on. And they all walked out. Glory, hallelujah. Now, the resurrection, let's look at it just a little bit here. What happened at the resurrection? The resurrection of Jesus was the greatest event that ever took place, either in the sense realm or in the spiritual realm. Nothing has ever, and ever. That's why the modernists can't accept it, because their sense knowledge, their sense wisdom, cannot understand spiritual things, spiritual power that's working in the universe. This shocked the whole world because now he's ahead of a new creation. We are a new creation. We're not the same as we used to be. We are children of light. We're sons and daughters of the King. We have what He promised we would get on the day of Pentecost. It's been flowing from one end of the world to the other. And in these last days, He's pouring it out upon all flesh around the world. Now they tell us that over 100 million have been filled with the Holy Ghost in this end time, speaking with other tongues. On top of that, the revelation of the name is spreading from one corner of the world to the other. I talked to a man that's a representative in the White House uh, the other day at the campground. Filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. We talked to him for a long, long time. He told us how the revelation of this is spreading across the country. From one end to the other. This is a great time. This is a great day. Church, he's coming back. There's a move on. There's a stir on. There's a awakening on. Now, he made a show. The Bible said here that he, when he conquered hell, he wasn't just satisfied with going down there and taking the keys. The Bible said that he made a show of the, the demonic world openly. He spoiled them. He went down there and, brother, he pulled the cover off. And he spoiled them before the whole wide world. Satan and the dark forces of hell have been crippled and they're dying. And the kingdom of kingdoms is taken over. And their kingdoms are being swallowed up. Swallowed up. Well, will he ever take America over? Well, we just like everybody else in debt. Already broke. The world's broke. Kingdoms are ready to fall apart. Smashed to the ground. But when Jesus Christ comes in his kingdom and sets it up for 1,000 years, brother, you can live on one fig tree in the backyard. You don't have to worry about nothing. You talk about grocers, they'll grow over the fence. Amen. You talk about all we've got to do is to go up to the house of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and worship God. Praise God. Eat figs and plum granites on the way. Hallelujah. Drink the wine. It's running down the side of the mountain, running off in a little stream. Just get a bucket full of it, full of it and drink it and go on. That ain't the kind you get drunk on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Old Brother Joe Duke was preaching that here one time. And he... He named several different denominations. He said, uh, they're going to make it in by the skin of their teeth. But he said, they're not going to be in the bride. He said, they'll have to bring us the wine. I said, not that bunch. They drank it all up before they got to us. <laughs> well, anyway, the new wine. This is the new wine. Praise God. Hallelujah. He made a show of them in the presence of all hell. And not only all hell, he's making a show of him now. He's got a church. He's got a church and it's built on a rock. And he's, 
He, he's used every bum and every power that he can, and he hasn't been able to shake it yet because it's built on a rock, it's built on the right foundation. Just like a gnat running against the uh, rock of Gibraltar trying to break it down. He, he, he just can't do it. I'm glad I'm in something to stand. When everything else is falling, I've got a kingdom within me. It's the kingdom of God. And this kingdom rules over all. Now, that brings you, you remember, you remember the scene, Matthew 28, 5 and 6. The woman, women came down to the sepulcher and they found it empty. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, who's been crucified. He's not here, for he is risen, even as he said. Everything else he said is going to happen. The angel said, Even as he said. Amen. Did you doubt it? He came out just like he said he was. He said, I've got power to lay it down. I've got power to take it up. Amen. Well, Mr. Hitler didn't have power to lay his down take it up, did he? Oh, he's still somewhere dead as a doornail. And he won't get out of there till the end of the great triple, uh, end of the millennium to be judged, cast into the lake of fire for what he did. But you see, it's different with the church. Different. Now, the Lord, He is now the Lord of sin. He can forgive it just like that and wash it away. And all sickness and disease, He can heal it just like that. Would you believe it? Everything. He died as a lamb and He arose as the high priest of all time, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Mary met Him and fell down calling Him Lord. And she was right. She called him Lord. Thomas called him Lord. And he said, why call you Lord and Master? Why call ye me Lord and Master? You do call me that. And so I am, he said. Now, I got so much here, I'm not going to get to it today. And now, he's about to take his own blood. This I'd like to see. Now he's going to take some of his own blood. You know the old high priest, when he kills the calf, he takes some of the blood in a basin. And then he would walk in to the most holy place in the temple. Nobody else could go in there but a high priest. Because there, God would meet. And the high priest, he had already set everything in order. Now he sprinkled himself with some of that blood. And now he walks in and he sprinkles it on the sacrifice. He sprinkles it on the altar and so forth in there. And then suddenly God appears and begins to talk to the high priest. But now Jesus, he said to Mary, don't touch me, I have not ascended yet. And then he ascended to the eternal Father that filled heaven and earth. And he took his blood, his own blood, in a basin into that holy place. And all oh, the angels bowed. And the blood was accepted. And now Jesus sits down upon the throne with the power to forgive every man, every sin, and wash it away forever. No longer will the blood of bulls and goats be offered, but now the blood of Jesus Christ been offered up once and for all. And it's eternal. It's forever and forever. Oh, saints that washed with the blood, it's forever and ever and ever. Your sins are gone. The new light has come. Praise God, the light of the world. Peter said, I'm the light of the world. We have the light. We understand the truth of doctrine. But there's something we love more than that. We love Him. We love Him. Amen. It took the fear out of men. It put faith within our hearts. It took that old dread of the graveyard out of us. Now we know. It's just like being born the first time in your mother's womb. Had you been able to communicate, you'd have said, no, I don't want to 
come out into this world, it'll hurt. I like it here. It's peaceful. It's quiet. But suddenly, the birth pains came. You and I came in the world. We looked up and, oh, we began to like it. Here was mom and here was dad and here were some brothers and here were some sisters and my, it's, it's, it's great to be around here. And I still sort of like it. But one day, if the Lord tarries, I begin to have pain again. Now I know what's waiting on the other side. As an infant, I didn't know what was waiting for me here. But now by faith, the eye of faith, I see beyond the veil. I know waiting on the other side is my Lord and Savior. Waiting at the cold river of Jordan. He's going to take me by the hand. And we're going to walk across, praise God. And he'll say, look back now, son. There'll never be any more death. There'll never be any more sin. There'll never be any more sickness. There'll never be any more pain. It's all gone. For 